What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about torque converter lockup for dummies. What you need to look for, how you need to do it, why it's important to get everything right the first time. Torque converter lockup for dummies, not your normal 700 R4 or 200, your street stuff. This is a turbo 400 that is a lockup style transmission. Check this out. Very interesting. All right, guys, this is a little bit of a flashback to a couple months ago. Just got the lockup converter and we took it apart to change the stator. Look how pretty and shiny this is. It's all nice and clean. Everything looks like it is brand spanking new because it is. It's only got a few spool up attempts on it and it didn't work out. Let me show you what it looks like now. So we're over here at Donald's. Donald, is that pretty accurate torque converter lockup for dummies? Yes, that would be great. So, and when I say dummies, I mean us because if we've never messed with lockup torque converter stuff. And so Donald bought this transmission used and this is a Mark Mickey transmission. It was non lockup, but it was built for lockup. So it could be either one. So he bought the, did you buy the converter? You bought the converter straight from Mickey though, right? And so it was a, a non lockup converter initially. Yep. And so ideally if you would buy the converter and transmission all together at one time, you probably get all the right stuff at one time and, and it ain't torque converter lockup for dummies no more. Right. They just send you everything you need. This is which he thought he was getting everything exactly right. And they got serial numbers on them and all this stuff. Um, first thing we run into was uh, the, the thing was a little too tight, yeah. right? The, the non-lockup. And so thought, okay, well, let's get a lockup converter so that you can make it super, super loose to spool. And so part of that, part, part of that making it super loose to spool is I happened to see a video on Cletus' stuff about something about a plug or something on the yep. inside. And so uh, we got up. Well, we thought the right people, but they told us that it, that's not the way it worked. But there is, in the end of this input shaft, there was a plug. But the torque converter, he put it on dyno last week. And even without the even without the torque converter trying to lock up, it was locking up and cutting off the motor. I don't know. If, did you get any video of that, Donald? No. Jamie that, may have gotten He may have gotten some. Because Kevin Mullins, TKM, was running it, and it would come up. And then it would flat cut off the motor. Yep. Lock up like the motor is locked up. Right. So we just got over here. We're going to play with this thing. We've been watching torque converter videos on YouTube. Found uh, a few things. Kevin got up with Mark Mickey. And that piece right there actually screws in to the end of the uh, the input shaft there. With a hole in the middle of a island. And there's a little hole in it. Oh, a big hole. That's, yeah, that's, that's probably a big, pretty decent size. In the boat. Yeah, I mean, you can see the hole right through the middle there. It ain't much of the boat left. So what, so what we're thinking is happening when the, when the solenoid on the inside transmission commands fluid, the fluid runs through the bolts, and it runs back, and then back down in there in the torque converter is a piston, and that makes it come up. That it looks makes, like there's holes in the side. If you look at it down at the very bottom, it looks like when it hits that wall, there's holes in the side or something. Yeah, so that's the. it's got a big piston back there, and I saw... There's a video I saw that uh, Marty Chance, his guys put out, Marty Chance, Neil Chance Converters, and they were talking about stacking clutches. And I don't know if y'all remember, we had this thing apart. And when you spin this, it would had a lot of drag. They called it clutch drag. And so that clutch drag, of course, if this is dragging and not freewheeling, then that's going to make the converter be less apt to spool, right? So the converter is not going to spool as easy because it's trying to lock up. The input shaft is actually in this. And so Marty Chance done a good job on his YouTube video. And this is like a seven year, this video is like seven years old that, that Marty Chance put out there. I and it was a new one. No, it's seven years old. And so I'm going to link that video too so he can kind of yeah. explain what's happening. And all torque converters should be the same. But basically, there's like six or seven steels and clutches in here. And it's just like a clutch pack in a transmission, right? So the more clutches you have, friction steel, friction steel, friction steel, the more clamping load it can hold. And so what they were saying is you can adjust that. So if you stack all the clutches together, then say if you only put like one clutch, then you can make this thing where it frees, free wheels a lot. So they got it on the dyno. And like I was saying, it was cutting the car off. And so now we just took this thing apart and it is completely... It's locked up solid now. It's locked now, up. now, last time when we changed the stator, that's not what it was. No, we, we had to hold it, but you could spin but it. But you could spin it. So, I don't know if maybe the clutches, maybe, I don't know, something's happened. Probably what's happened, since this is a lockup converter, 
And let's think about fluid in here. I think what's happened. Got pressure locked up in there. The pressure, the pressure from the normal flow of fluid in here, since it doesn't have the O-rings. The, the flow out to let the pressure Wherever out. that thing's at. Yeah, right here. Yep. It doesn't have the O-rings. Normal transmission pressure has applied fluid to the clutch pack. Mm -hmm. And I bet, I bet it's welded together. I bet that's why we can't get it out. We're fixing to try to get it out and see if we can figure it out. But you can see it's it's all black in there. This is not, it wasn't this burnt last time. Now we have spooled it up a bunch, but I mean, and it's been laggy. So that makes sense. And now I understand when, when I got, got over here earlier, I was asking Donald, I was like, well, Donald, I don't understand how to cut the car off if the lockup's not working. But now looking at it, I can see exactly what happened because it was trying to apply the clutches the whole time. The yeah. whole time that clutch was applying because of the pressure in the that converter. Might be a whole problem the yes, whole time. that is one hundred percent the whole problem is that it did not have this piece in here, which we ask about, but we I don't guess we asked exactly. Right we didn't ask the right question. Yep. And so since we didn't have the right question, we didn't get the right answer. And that's what it is. So when you're going to a lockup, there's a lot to this, guys. It's not just simple. And it's definitely best if you get get it all one time, one shot, but that's not always feasible. I mean, you know, it just doesn't work out that way sometimes. And, but I mean, it's got all the right stuff. I mean, but it's just compatibility is the problem. The other thing we didn't know that was a problem when you first went to the lockup was this billet plate. How long did you, how long did you try to get the converter to seat back into transmission? I was here for three hours one night. <laughs> and I, I'm like, I, it's not going to go. I even called other friends over to come over and do this. And I was like, Donald, it's got to go back. I was like, you yeah. know, I was away. I was like, it's got to go back. He's like, it's as far back as it can go, but it's not deep enough. It, it actually was almost flush with this, right? Yep. We thought it was not going back at the last step. And the reason why is if you think about it, which we didn't, because we didn't know because we're, this is torque converter lockup for dummies. Yep. We're learning, but it's taller. And so since it's taller, you have to have a billet plate. Uh, oh, it ain't gotta be a billet, but you gotta have a spacer. Um, TKM is custom doing those. I guess there's a few people doing them now, yeah. but that's a Coyote one and it spaces it back. If you don't have that, then it's a problem. So we're gonna try to take this thing apart and I got a feeling what we're gonna see based on what we got here now is this is going to be, um, they're going to be welded together. We've got a little bit of movement in it, but it has, I bet it's fried them. Let's, let's keep taking it apart. We'll see what we see. I'll, I'll update you in a minute. I need both hands to get burnt transmission fluid. All right, guys. Well, we got that out. Uh, I don't know the official names of any of this stuff, but you can see this is brand new. Lockup's not applied in the, any at all uh, that we could tell. But you can see how it's galled all this up. And that's where it got hot on the on the frictions down there. And so you can see all the heat, these are completely welded to the uh, steels. So basically it's just a snap ring and then they've got all this stuff in here. Uh, it's a piston down in there. But asking the right questions is imperative um, when you're you know piecing stuff together. And like I said, this is a lockup for dummies. Uh, we're the dummies. We didn't ask the right questions at the right times. And didn't get the right answers because we didn't ask the right questions, apparently. But you can see clearly the piston is down there. You can see down in there there's holes. And within those holes, that's where the fluid applies this. And so this piece, when it goes down in there with those, that's how it prevents fluid from activating that clutch pack at all times. So these are 100%. Those are welded shut. Those are welded together. I cannot move them. I cannot spin it. Uh, this is what happens when you get light friction and it doesn't all apply at one time. So uh, that might be, be able to be salvaged, I imagine. I'm gonna snap this out real fast just to see. Um, well, no, I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll take it apart and see, let's see. All right guys, so we just removed this little snap ring here. Easy enough, right? And so this is the pressure plate that was there. Of course, this is just like a, this is just like a clutch pack in a transmission. But look at this, that is a friction material. There is no friction material on it. The friction material is gone. Um, that is a steel friction material. That is no friction. Steel friction material. And you can tell the friction material because it's got these teeth 
That's what actually binds into this. That's why we couldn't pull it out is because this was binding, binding up, up because it was all it was all twisted up. Oh my goodness. It's getting worse as it goes down. So steel friction. So that's the friction's gone though. And so what we were what we looked at the video that um, Marty Chance done with Neil Chance racing is basically what they were doing. Different cars, different so the piston and stuff is probably fine, but this is just like a like a high gear clutch um, drum or reverse drum. See, it's got springs in it. The fluid goes down this way and then it applies and it just pushes it up to lock it up. So that's exactly what, what happened or didn't happen in this scenario is it just wasn't working properly. It was dragging the whole time. Uh, so yeah, so this is gonna have to, this is beyond my scope of uh, being able to fix, obviously because we don't have the parts and pieces. I mean, these are probably pretty common out of a normal mm -hmm. something, uh, 700 or something. Hell, it might just be a 700 or 200 clutch pack. But it looks like it had one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like it had five clutches. And so what uh, Marty Chance was saying is, depending on the car, you may want to have less clutches um, actually touching. So what you would do is stack the clutches all together or stack the steels all together. And that would make it so that this free wheel is a little bit better. So, yeah. You know, the right. first time we had it apart, it had a lot of tightness then, but it had been run some. It had already started locking so up. So it's already started locking. That's our whole problem with this thing. Yep. We probably ain't going to have a spool problem now. It, might, it probably won't. Because you won't. said it when we said it, we had to hold this with both hands while you even tried to turn the center before. And it had already been run because we were changing yeah, the stator. All we did was change the stator, and it, you were just looking. Didn't even take the snap ring off. We just looked from the top. It was already locking up. That's right. Because... That's exactly right. That's exactly yeah. what was happening yep. because it wouldn't spool any better, and we were confused. We were like, "Why won't the lockup spool better than right. the non-lockup?" And then he sent us the soup, the loose. It was stator, actually worse, and it made it worse, right? Yeah. And that makes sense because it, we just kept on backing up the whole time. The more runs, the worse it got. That's right because this, the more in a normal stator, there's this is not splined and this is free wheels. That's why it spooled up better with the freaking with the old one. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. All right, some good information too. Uh, Brandon, y'all see him over on Courtney's channel all the time, the Paint and Paper Hustle. Um, this was actually Courtney's idea too, since he's got Coyote Motor, Coyote Motor problems. Uh, Donald, uh, this was a three inch pipe coming out of here. And so he paid Brandon to remake this out of two and a half. And it helped tremendously, didn't it? I mean, it helped. I didn't see it actually spooling up, but okay. you said it went from getting hung at 32 to 34 to go ahead and going up. Right. So uh, I think it's going six seconds. Hey, ten pound of boost. I think it's going to spool up fine once we get the converter done. So uh, the converter mixed with this, I think I think it's going to be in in good shape. And he's ready to go to freaking racing. I mean, he's ready. I mean, you spent the money, spent the time, man, man, old oh man. All right, so we just got this kind of snapped together. Those are all the clutches. So this is just going back together. But look, that's the way a normal non-lockup converter spins. It's just that easy. It should spin that super easy. Um, and then of course you've got the, the diode, the sprag in here. That always goes, it, it clicks to the right and moves. But that's a little bit above my pay grade as far as how that all exactly works. But when it's a lockup, ideally this would still spin with less traction, with less friction. But go check out the video, the old, this is an old video from seven years ago, Marty Chance uh, from Neil Chance Converters. He was explaining how you can stack these to make it so that it doesn't, is not quite so aggressive uh, when it locks up and he's talking about load sensitive on the motor. All right, guys, well, we're still learning. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes that's part of it. And you know, you gotta ask the right questions to get the right answers. We thought we were asking the right questions, but apparently we were not. So this is how you don't screw up a lockup. We're going from a non-lockup to a lockup. If you're buying bits and pieces, even if it's the highest end stuff it is, sometimes they have to be tweaks to make stuff work together. Comment, like, and subscribe. See y'all.